Greetings everyone, this is MDonk, and uh, what a time to start a new leveling series, right? Welcome to Russian Fishing 4. If you're new to the game and stumbling upon this video or my channel, uh, welcome to the community. Hope you are enjoying playing this fine fishing game. And every so often, every few months, I try to start a new leveling series. Sometimes I have a different focus. This focus will really just be looking at the new Mosquito Lake. Mosquito was redesigned recently. And between Mosquito Lake and the fact that we're in the middle of a New Year's Fair, this has got to be a pretty exciting time for new players to stumble upon RF4. So if you are new, welcome. And hopefully you'll pick up a few things in this video series that'll be helpful. I don't know that this will be a long lasting video series. In some series, I've gone pretty far into the game. But like I said, I expect that the focus of this will be new mosquito and um, we'll just kind of go till we feel like we've we've done enough. We're gonna start here in the tutorial and I'm gonna walk through the basic steps. You can do this if you are brand new. Uh, it gives you good um, instruction uh, to, on what you need to do. So we're gonna go ahead and work our way through this. As I do feel like it um, tells you just about everything you need to do and everything you need to know just to get through this basic tutorial. Of course, the first thing we're going to do is float fish. The focus of this series will probably end up being a little more bottom or feeder fishing. That's typically what I do. Uh, however, um, with the New Year's Fair going on, obviously we'll be doing some float fishing as well. And we have to do some float fishing here just to get through the tutorial. Oof. All right. We'll try to wait till a real bite comes, if possible. And once we get through the tutorial, I will start talking about uh, some of the early decisions you make, and, and they are, they can be really important. Um, I would say, that's really weird. And I usually catch a Chinese sleeper here, and I usually feel like Chinese sleepers aren't that hard to hook, so I don't know what is going on with this one, but maybe we'll actually get something other than a Chinese sleeper on our first fish. It may take me a little bit of time to adjust. You know, f fishing on a level one account with no skills does feel a lot different than fishing on my main account with um, certain equipment and lots of skills and all that. Hey, there's our Chinese sleeper. All right, so now we keep it. And then it's gonna teach us how to find the house and get spare tackle. Let me think about this. Which tackle do we want first? I think we want float tackle. The only nice thing about, I do, I, I think they're, yeah, anyway, we'll do float tackle for now. Okay, so now it's going to have us go to Mosquito and sell our fish. So you hit escape to go to the map page here, and we're going to click on Mosquito and travel. Um, so yeah, we will take a look at some of the early decisions you make. In fact, early on in this episode, I'm going to go ahead and, if you are into bottom fishing, I'm going to go ahead and give you some like target gear to be keeping your eye on as you move through the levels, because at this point, for me at least, I'm pretty decided on what, you know, what I think the main considerations are. All the way up till, you know, you're level 30 and, and really in deep into carp fishing. If you, like me, end up get, really getting into bottom fishing. Um, if you want the sort of efficient path, right? I can kind of tell you like, hey, you know, save up for these things. Just go one after another. The main thing in this game, it may feel like it takes a long time to level. It can be feel like a pretty grindy game, but really what it takes a long time to do is earn enough silver to buy the gear that you need. Um, all right, so he wants to go to the fishing market, which this is New Mosquito, so fishing market's in a little bit different location. <coughs> That's the cafe, not the fishing market. So we'll go to the fishing market now and sell our fish. All right, now wants to find a tackle store and buy bagot, maggots. Sorry. Now we do have the New Year's Fair going on. That can also influence some of the stuff we get in this leveling series. All right, so here's the tackle store. This is where you're going to 
get everything that you'll need. And right now we're gonna click on baits and purchase the cheapest thing of maggots. Now it's gonna teach you how to craft bread. And I'm gonna tell you, again, especially if you're into bottom fishing or float, but um, you want to level up your bait harvesting just as quickly as you can, faster than you, you know, think you would, you really need to be leveling it faster than it would naturally come to you to be leveling it. I think for a lot of new players, it's something that you don't really think about. I mean, you're kind of focused on the equipment and the fishing, learning how to play the game. But the sooner you get to making, uh, making new baits and unlocking new baits, the better you'll be able to fish, the more efficiently you'll be able to fish. All right, so we're going to go ahead and craft all of our bread um, that we have. And then we'll be buying more bread and crafting more as we can. Our fisherman is hungry. You can eat for free down here. All right, so the, the tutorial is having us go to Winding Rivulet. So I'm going to do that just to clear the tutorial. This is going to teach us the basics of spin fishing, which I just... The only way we do much spin fishing in this leveling series is if I get brave enough to try to like troll around Mosquito a little bit. But um, again, we're going to be, I'm not saying we won't go to Winding or Old Berg or whatever at all, according to how long we play this account. But I really want to focus primarily on Mosquito, unless the fishing just gets really slow there, which I don't anticipate. It seems like there's consistently been some pretty good spots ever since Mosquito came out. Uh, and hopefully the bream keep biting, because if they do, that's going to make all of this a lot more fun. But we'll see. Okay, so approach the river to the left of the wooden bridge. Should be like right here. Choose a spinning rod, equip it. So this one we want to equip. Friction brake to 25. So you hold down R and then do your mouse wheel to get to 25. Sorry, that was friction brake. Don't hold down R for friction brake, just move your mouse wheel. Retrieval, we want to put down to 10, which you do have to hold down R to do your retrieval speed. All right, so over there. And then just, just reel it in straight. I've never seen this not I've never seen this not get a bite. I've seen that happen. I've seen the fish pop off. I mean, we have no skills, right? So it's like fish can escape from us for sure. All right, so we actually got a marker perch. We'll take that. While we're here, let's go ahead and let's go ahead and do another. Um, just get another fish or two here because we're not going to be doing much spinning. So let's enjoy it while we're here. tutorial is like automatic fish biting now that we're out of the tutorial we might not be able to catch a fish here one thing that would be fun about trying to do some trolling at mosquito though is that there are those new spinner baits a part of the uh new year's for christmas fair so i could see it being fun to at least give those a try let's try let's do this one more time and by the way we're using this fishing furry T01. I think a fish just popped it and then popped right off there. So we hold down shift, which makes you go really fast, and then let go, go back to normal speed. Again, there was another fish. Might might not be a fish bite. It might just be the the lure going through the water. But when you're in that tutorial, I'm telling you, a fish a fish nails your lure every time. I don't know how it's programmed that way, but it must be because as soon as you're out of the tutorial, I've done this before. As soon as you're out of the tutorial, all of a sudden it's a lot harder to. All right. So we do have the, um, the fishing rod here and we could use this to troll at Mosquito. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and disassemble it now because for now we'll probably be using that reel, even though it's not ideal, we'll probably be using that reel at, um, at Mosquito for our first feeder rod. All right, so the first thing I want to do is buy a very basic feeder rod so that we have one feeder that we can use. And then the second thing I want to do is, even before we start fishing, I want to give you 
just some ideas of gear that you may want to consider buying as you're moving through the levels. And it's going to be pretty basic. I'm just going to try to give you some highlights of stuff. So if you are new to the game and you're really wanting to get into bottom feeder fishing, and when I say that, what we're talking about, and maybe I can at least show you that once I've put the feeder together, but basically it's feeding, it's fishing for lots of different types of fish, but it's by putting the bait, boily, whatever you're fishing with at the bottom. You've got a sinker or something that's holding it down to the bottom. It's often using ground bait to attract the fish and then it auto hooks the fish and your fishing pole will either start ringing a bell or blinking a light or whatever to tell you that you've got a fish on. And then it's just a matter of picking that rod up out of the, off the pot holder, off the ground and reeling that fish in. And you can fish with three rods at the same time. So when I talk about bottom fishing in general, that's what I'm talking about. Let's, um, let's sell this perch. I guess we could have looked, sold it at winding. It might've been worth slightly more, but probably not. Uh, it should be the same actually between winding and mosquito. So let's look and see what we actually have here. Um, in terms of equipment. So right now we have one float rod, one, which is a telestick, right? We've got a float rod, which is another telestick, but it's a bamboo stick. And we want to hit this button here to see this has a load capacity of 3.8 kilos. So we don't want anything heavier than 3.8. We put 3.1. I don't want to put that on there yet though, because I'm not sure what we're going to get for our first feeder. And we have a spinning reel that can hold up to 2.5, a very weak spinning reel. It's scary weak, right? Um, so that's what we have. We have this one spark reel. We've got a little bit of line, some cheap hooks, a couple of cheap lures some very basic baits, a feather float, which we don't want to have to use if possible, not too much, and uh, a couple of things of food left. And that's all we have. That You start off with almost nothing, although you start off with more than you used to, to be fair. Um, okay. We do have 48 silver, though. Let's see what 48 silver gets us. By the way, uh, the developers of this game have often used posters to tell us what's coming next. That looks a lot like a fly fishing reel. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Okay, so we want to go to rods and then we want to go to feeder rods. Now, this is a really good thing to start with once you have enough silver. So we may be saving for a couple of these. I don't know that we'll get three, but I bet we'll get two, 149 silver. But right now, what can we afford? The very basic, and I'm gonna get the cheapest, 37.8. There shouldn't be a difference in load capacities. It's just a difference in length, right? Longer can help you cast a little farther, have a little bit better control of the fish, but we need our silver. So we're gonna get really cheap on this first one. All right, so now we have a feeder. We know we have a reel that we could use if we had to. We have line, I guess, that we could put on there. We probably need a hook, but we might be able to do without a hook initially. We want to get a feeder, cheap, cheap feeder. I'm gonna go with 30 gram, but first I'm gonna check the, the, um, the test on the feeder rod we just bought. The test is up to 100 grams, so we'll be fine with a 30 gram classic feeder, very cheap. And then we also are gonna want a bite alarm. Though we could do without, we can still afford that. We're gonna get a bite alarm. And we also, okay, so let's put our rod together. Let me make sure that we've got everything I think we do. All right, so load capacity is 4.6 kilos. Our reel goes to three, that's probably pretty reasonable. Our line goes to 3.1, it's not ideal. You really want the, the, the line to be slightly less than the reel. We're not gonna be able to use a leader at this point, so that's a little awkward, but we'll make it work. This is our bite indicator, this is our feeder. Um, we don't have any ground bait yet, so we can't put anything in the feeder. By the way, you don't have to use a feeder. We could have just gotten a sinker, but I think ground bait is so important that I'm gonna try to start using it right from the start. start. Now we need a hook, so we'll put size 14 hook on there. Is that the ideal hook size we'd probably go with? Probably. And then we'll probably just be fishing with worms. All right, so we have enough left, I think, to get one stack of ground bait going. 
what are we able to use that we'd want to use? Now, when it comes to ground bait, if you hit in and then go to ground bait, you can see some of the recipes. One thing we can already make is crucian gibble ground bait. It's probably what we ought to do. So millet porridge and sunflower oil, okay? So we know that's what we need. So go back to ground bait. We'll put it in alphabetical order. For an additive, we want millet porridge, which is right here. Very cheap. We're not spending a lot of money. And for the attractant, we want sunflower oil. And the good thing about the attractant, it might be a little bit pricey. Nah, it's not too bad, 0.9 silver. And it, you get five portions. So we technically can make, you know, multiple. So because of that, let's go back to um, millet porridge and crackers and get we'll get one more. So we're gonna have a total of two pieces of ground bait to make, assuming that we don't fail crackers. All right, so now what we're gonna do is hit in, go to ground bait, crucian gibble ground bait, make it. We leveled up our ground bait. Quality, seven out of 10. For having no points in it, that's not bad. Let's make another one. Seven out of 10 again, I like it. So now if we go back to our feeder rod that we put together, we can put the ground bait in the cage and we are good to go. So we want this to be our number one rod. So what I'm doing is I'm holding down U and I'm assigning it to number, number one. Now, let's see what our number two has on it. It has this float, a 16 hook, and worms. We're just gonna have to make it work, right? And then our number three is this little thing. We can put this old line on there, a feather float, um, a rusty hook, and then a maggot. So we technically can use three rods right from the start, one feeder and two float, right? Okay, now let's breathe a minute <laughs> and let me show you, let's just go to feeder rods. Let me show you what I would suggest. It's actually easier to look at reels, I think. Okay, so this is what I would recommend. Get ready to pause it if you need to, write it down, come back to it later. This might be a little overwhelming if you're just starting out. But I think this is what I would recommend, okay? Um, first of all, we're gonna get, uh, at least, we're gonna put together at least one more basic feeder, which is what we just put together. So that cost another approximately 50 silver for the whole thing. And when we get our next spark, which are these really cheap reels, we'll splurge and get the one with the slightly bigger spool. Because with bottom fishing, the only danger we really have at Mosquito is we just don't want to get spooled, right? We don't want to run out of line. Um, and so obviously the rod we're going to put with that is the one we just bought. We might get the nicer one, we'll see, but it's the, that one's the one we're going to get. Okay, so the first thing for feeder fishing that I would save up for is at least two of these feeder fisher start kits. You save a little bit of money by getting the kit, and the equipment that's in this kit is decent. It's like the stuff that I would choose even if you were buying it separately. Um, it's pretty much, I think, worth the investment of getting these kits. So we need to save 149 silver at least twice to get two of these kits. And this is gonna allow us to catch a lot bigger fish more comfortably than what we're able to catch now. We only have to be level three to do this. We'll be level three way before we have enough silver to get this, I think. But that's what we're gonna be keeping an eye on, okay? From there, you will use, and if you're gonna wait a long time, you may wanna get three of these, not just two. Because if you're going to really wait and not and upgrade to the next level from what I'm about to say, then it's like going to be a long time. And I say either two or three, depending on how much if you're into float fishing. Because you could have two feeders in and then float or spin fish with your other one. Because you can fish with three rods, right? Um, but if you're just going to do feeder, which I don't blame you if you decide to, you're probably wanting three of these because you're going to be saving for a long time. Because the next thing I'm going to recommend you purchase... is probably gonna be the Sabre 60. Just the reel costs over 1100 silver. And you can't even use it till you're level 16. So in the past, 
I would often encourage people to do a half step and get an Adriatic of 5,000. They're out of stock here, but I think they usually run 400 and something silver. You could check winding. If not, you might have to wait till you get to Old Berg and there are a little bit more there. You can't get them to level 12 anyway, but if you can't wait all the way until you have enough silver for the Sabre 60, this would be the half step. Notice the, the max kilo on the reel is about 7.5. But if you're doing okay with those feeder starter box kits, then I think you can skip this step. Because really what you're fishing for until you hit 16 and can start using the saber, really what you're fishing for is probably gonna be bream, maybe tinch a little bit, a lot of crucian gibbles and small stuff, hitting cafe orders, trying to get silver as most, most you can. And so, you can do that on those starter kits. So I think if you're asking me like for an efficient, now I, I should say, do what is fun for you. There's a lot of good reels. There's a lot of fun reels. Um, by the way, if you don't want the Cyber 6, uh, 60, the Pulsar 6000, it's slightly more, um, but it's equal to the Saber 60 or very similar. Either one of these, I like both of these. Some people poo poo on this one, but I like both of them. But there's a lot of good stuff. I'm just saying this is pretty. This is an efficient path. And by the way, I also like this reel. Again, if you don't want to wait quite as long, but you want to get closer, the Proton 6000 is decent. But the nice thing about the Sabre 60 is you're getting into a little bit bigger spool and you're getting more strength out of your reel. And the nice thing about this, besides it being so good for bottom fishing, you can also, by that time, you'll be getting to a place called Quarry Lake and you can throw these on a couple of spin, cheap spinning rods and go... Um, trolling so driving a boat with your spinning rods out the back trolling the lures around the lake and catching fish and that's a lot of fun and it's kind of the closest thing to bottom fishing in terms of spin fishing so anyway saber 60s i like a lot now what rod are you going to put with the saber 60s this is a little less clear but i'll just tell you i've always really liked um the fortuna feeders you don't have to you know, wait on this one. You don't have to go that big, but they're just really solid feeders. You can use that at level nine. So I like the Saber 60s with the Fortuna feeders. There are other options. You don't have to do that. Just just make sure you're getting one that's, you know, the the Saber 60 has a max. I mean, you're going to end up putting like around 10 kilo line on Sabers, maybe a little bit more if you overload, but probably around 10. And so just make sure your rod is at least like 15, 16 kilos, if not better. I think that's why I like the Fortuna because you've got a lot of room there. 19 kilos is nice and strong. This can, it just lasts forever. It's, they're just great feeder reels. Okay, rods. So where are you going after that? Let's just go ahead and complete this real quick. I won't spend a lot of time. After you have the Sabre 60, to me, it is a no brainer because at this point, you can start fishing for carp. When you go, when you take the step from Sabre 60 to caliber HSV, you now are fishing for carp if you want to be at places like Oldberg and Bear. So we have taken very few steps and now we're into carp fishing. And usually when you get into this game and you watch other people play and you see how like dynamic the carp fishing is, that's oftentimes become someone's goal. So I know 2,800 silver seems like a lot and it is, but ultimately the faster you get to this step, the quicker you can do the type of fishing you probably will end up wanting to do. So what are you going to pair with this rod wise? This is uh, a little bit trickier. So you see the max drag is 15.5, but you're going to be overloading this. This is a high quality reel. Don't worry about this at a low level, but by then you'll sort of understand that really high quality reels, you can overload a little bit. So you're going to want a rod that at least has mid twenties, if not higher load capacity. I don't even know what feeder rod I would necessarily recommend. Let's see, maybe like the Model 1, 29. I mean, that's overkill a little bit, but I mean, that's kind of what you're looking for. The Mectas are a good line. They get up 25. That's that's kind of the lowest you want to go. I don't want to go high, lower than 25, really. Um, so I think it's probably the Model 2, the Model 1, Mecta, something like that. Model 1s are really high quality rods, though if you're going to go feeder rod, but this is when it gets a little confusing because I think the ideal thing, the ideal thing to match up with your new caliber HSV is going to be the Fortuna carp rod. 
a little bit pricey for a rod 1600 can't use it till level 16 but you can't i mean you'll be well past 16 by the time you have this much silver in all likelihood but again if you put the caliber on the fortuna carp rod you can fish for carp at oldberg and bear and be comfortable you can be effective so i think that's the efficient path and, and I won't go past that. I mean, or at least I won't talk a lot about that. I mean, past that, you're probably saving up for a Tagara, you know, um, probably out of stock here, but you know, whatever it is, 18, 19,000, I don't even know. And then, you're, then, I mean, then you're at, then you can fish for any carp in the game, even at Amber at the biggest carp lake in the game. I mean, this is almost like your in-game carp gear. So you see, we've, we've really not taken that many steps. So do what's fun for you. You may want to take more steps than what I just described. But if you do kind of want the efficient fast track to try to get to carp fishing, those are at least some things to think about. All right, let's do some fishing. So 5387 is a good place to catch Crucian Gibbles. Is that over here? That's 53.89, isn't it? So 53.87, is that actually off the dock? Uh-oh, did we crash? No, we're good. Yeah. Okay. So, um, let's put one in with bread and let's just see okay let me show you how to clip clipping means you're setting a maximum length that you can cast so like in this spot we definitely don't want to cast past 20. now i don't know we don't have any skills we might not be able to get it to 20 right i'm going to throw bread in with our ground bait size 14 hook and i'm just going to cast as far as we can and see what happens <laughs> I don't know why, but I didn't think this was that long of a clip. That's what VK says for a clip here. I don't know if it's really supposed to be that long. All right. We should be able to hear those bells going off even from over here. Now, this is the New Year's celebratory thing. So we are going to be doing a little bit of fishing here. We're going to go. We'll just keep it on one meter depth. We've got worm zone. We're just going to cast these in. Let's do it over here. Oh man, there's no way we're gonna be able to cast this little thing with without float depth. Let's just go float depth of 50. We'll keep this one close to the surface. We're already getting a bite right there. Oh, this is the wrong one. All right. Nice. Nice. That is a heck of a fish for our first fish here. All right. So I should explain, because if you're new, you may not know what's going on with this New Year's event. And if it's past New Year's, and I think this, this is gonna last till January 11th, something like that. If it's past that time, then this may not even be here anymore. Um, but basically, not only can you catch fish in this spot, but you can occasionally catch presents in this spot. And if you look at this sign, it shows you the different bag of gifts you can get. And I really wanted to see what it would be like for a new player who's just started playing to fish in this spot, you know, with this very weak gear to see like how brutal that is, uh, to really see what the bite rate's like. Okay, you hear our bells going off? Now there's no rush with that. Uh, one thing that's nice about feeders is that the fish will probably stay on there um, for quite a while. So we'll go ahead and see if we can pull these in. Man, we're doing good. Now we're catching rough, which is really nice. So we just hit level two. All right, let's go check on our feeder real quick. All right, we've got a fish on. And it's not too big we can actually get it in one thing that's a little weird fishing off of this dock is we don't have a net so if we did get a fish that was too big we might not be able to get it in we sort of need to be able to drag it up onto the land 
That is a nice fish for our low level fishing experience here. I'm gonna start doing it from right here. It's not the exact same spot, but I think this will be fine. That was 19 meters. I just don't know about a 20 meter clip here, but okay. Now let's go see if we've uh, got any fish that are, oh yeah. I don't know if it's still on, it's not. Especially with these cheap hooks and no skills, we will miss a lot of fish. We'll miss more than we catch probably on float, but that's okay. You just keep going at it until you've earned enough silver to get another feeder going. Um, and, and actually, it might be worth considering buying a nicer float rod since we will, because of this event, probably be doing a good amount of float fishing in this series, at least early. Um, Let's see if we can get one of these here. I like using worms and maggots here though because the fish that nibble the longest are like the Crucian gibbles. But if you can catch the Chinese sleepers, the rough, even the roach to a degree, you'll have a lot less of these uh, just like nibbles that last forever and then the fish comes off and it's just a complete waste of time. But even fishing with three rods like we are, I mean, it is just really slow here early on. It will get a lot better when we get a little nicer equipment, nicer hooks, when we get more feeder rods going. I mean, that's when we'll really start to, our silver per hour will start increasing a good bit. Common roach. And I don't mind having these just like right here in the end here. All right, so one thing we haven't talked about is the cafe. You do wanna be keeping an eye on the cafe to see if you can do orders for the cafe. So rough orders are usually really nice. So if we can get four more rough, it would be worth turning that in for 32 silver. That would be huge. Four more roach. We already have the sleeper order. Let's see how much time left, 86 hours. We've got plenty of time. So we can wait and see if we get more small sleepers that fit for that. The baits we're using, we'll catch a lot of these fish. We might even get the perch order, but I doubt it. Crucian, depends on how long we sit here and fish. So keep an eye on the cafe orders because you're getting at least double in most cases, sometimes more than that, for turning in a cafe order instead of, uh, instead of just selling it straight to the fish market. Kind of nervous, like if we do hook one of those presents, I think it's gonna be a little bit difficult to get it in with this, this equipment, but we'll see. And we've got really, really weak line and equipment. And some of the, um, the presents weigh a little bit that you can catch here. And then there's also like this barbell, this weight thing that they, you can catch that's, you really need more like six or seven kilo line to safely get that in. So it's kind of a high risk, high reward for a level one player or two or whatever to be fishing in this spot, in my opinion, but it's just too fun not to, right? We could move our feeder over here. We're probably gonna catch decent fish off our feeder in this spot too. We need to buy a map. We don't have a map of mosquito in our bag yet you do that the administration building once again pretty nice fish here on bread so with our ground bait we are um yeah, catching some pretty nice fish consistently on uh, on our feeder, so that's nice. But the feeder being so far away, we can't really see what's going on with our floats when we're over there.
I'm not sure we can afford any, but to try to get those rough, it'd be really nice if we could put like size 20 hooks on, even smaller, at least for the night and early morning. Also it might be worth getting some blood worms. Those tend to attract smaller fish. Level three, decent little gibble there. All right, let's see what we can afford. Um, well, let's see what we can use. I think level three, we can start to use a little bit better hooks. Uh, we might have to sell a fish or two to be able to afford it though. What's the cheapest hook that comes in a size 20? I think I always run into this, uh, these, but they're out of stock. 18's not bad, it's just not ideal. These require level eight, so it's a while before we can use those. 18's only three silver. Two star hook versus, so the stars show you what quality it is. 18's are out of stock of the stingers. 18 might get us a little more rough though. So that would be three silver. Hmm. We're gonna end up breaking hooks and, and I mean, losing hooks anyway on these floats, I think. We just gotta make sure we're making more money than we're losing. Ooh, that was rough. I thought we had that one. Does this have an 18 already? No, it's a 16. Okay, nothing going on with this guy. Not yet. It's nighttime, maybe we should put worms in over there too. I don't know. Now we're getting a bite. zooming in with Z and if you own binoculars you can zoom in twice Gotta be a gibble or a crucian. It's such an annoying bite, right? Yeah, we need smaller hooks right now. So we can get on the rough. Or try to. Alright, we're gonna try it. There we go. It was a little early, like that might not have been a bite, you know, kind of got lucky there. But um, I want to go see what's on the feeder and this one's also got a little bite going on. Oh, I messed that up, went too fast. It might not have been a full bite anyway. All right, let's see if we can get some three hooks. I haven't put any skill points in yet, and that's really kind of on purpose. Like I, there's no rush to start putting skill points in. 
uh, it's definitely something you want to think about because you only get one reset of points after that you have to spend real world real money to reset your points so um, do a little thinking and make sure you're you know enjoying the type of fishing you thought you would enjoy there's a lot of decisions with skill points let's see where we are on maybe I just go ahead and claim this order it's really not that big a deal um, we're one roach away from that order we're closing in on that one but I really wanted to try to get that rough order so we've got to do something this would give us a couple of 18 hooks yeah let's just do it let's just do it and I think we want to get one really cheap one oh wait they don't have cheap ones on the they're out of stock so let's get two 18s and then let's see if we can afford blood worms yeah we're good all right so we're gonna put blood worms on the bamboo rod and let's just go ahead and do it let's just go ahead and change it out real quick uh, 18 blood worms and what's the depth let's put this at one meter and we have to sort of cast this right at the very end get it right in there and I guess we can let that bite finish let's go see if we can catch up on our feeder I'm gonna move our feeder I'm gonna move our feeder down here. Roach, I think that might've finished the roach order. I'm gonna hope it did. All right, and what we're gonna do on the feeder is use the other hook with worms. And I wanna try to cast it. Oh, I don't have the map yet. I need to get the map too, but that costs silver. I think over in this direction is the four meter hole. So we're just going to hope that we're getting to the four meter hole there and see if we can't catch a rough that way. All right, so that means we don't have another small hook for this one, but that's okay. We'll just leave it as is for now. So let's see if we get any rough on that feeder. Let's check, see if we have the roach order, because if we can turn the roach order in, then I can purchase another size 18 hook. I don't know if 18 is small enough, but yeah, there we go. There's nine more silver. See, those cafe orders are just the way to go. I mean, all the other fish we have together is only worth four silver, but if you save them and turn them in for cafe orders, it just doubles the money so quickly, even more than doubles in some cases, because a lot of those fish are non-markers, so they're worth nothing, basically. So we're gonna get another size three. Is there anything else that we need that would help us at the moment? Okay, one thing that would help me is a nicer float. I like these little floats. We're gonna splurge. We're gonna splurge. I think we ought to get a really cheap float. I, I think the quicker we're not using this bamboo stick, the better off we'll be. I really do think that's the case. Oh, there's a rough, that's what I'm talking about. All right, so we're gonna put our upgraded upgraded feather on that. And you just catch another rough, please. Do we think we have a fish on here? These rough are, I mean, if we do catch a rough on this one, they're very light biters, so we won't really, we won't, won't really know. So I was hoping we would get a rough on the blood worms, which we may some, but that was a very small crucian. What 
We'll give this a couple more moments. If we don't have a bite on this, then we'll just cast it in a different place. Another thing we can do is assign ground bait to our um, our numbers here and just cast, just throw some in the water just to try to increase the bite rate. of whatever fish might like that. Mm. It was so shallow. I just couldn't tell if it was a bite or not. I don't like how shallow that is. All right, that'll be better, hopefully. I really don't like that our feeder still doesn't have a bite on there. 18, again, if we had size 20 hooks, if they weren't out of stock, it would, and I could have checked winding. I just didn't want to take the time to travel back and forth. But, um, <laughs> but, uh, size 20 hooks with worms or red worms or even blood worms, um, it's a really good way to catch rough typically. This should be a rough. Very nice. Yeah, if we can get that rough order done, which I don't know that we'll be able to, but if we could, that will be a, uh, a huge amount of silver for where we are at this level. All right, let's see if it paid off, if we actually got a rough on this. Or if we just got something else random. All right. It's that size 18 hook. All right, let's go clip 15. And let's just kind of cast right out here. Oh, we didn't even make it 15 meters. That's okay. Let's just put it right out here. See if there's rough right there. Ugh, I hate this thing. We got to get rid of this bamboo rod. So how much would it be for another cheap telescopic rod instead of the bamboo guy? I may actually do that before getting a second feeder since we're doing gonna do so much float fishing for this event. Probably get the middle one. That's what we already have is the middle one. Six meters is getting a little long. It does give you more yeah, I think we go to the middle one. Could even get the little one. It's still the same load capacity, you know? It's still the same strength, it's just about how long it is. Makes casting a little easier. Oh, we've got a fish on. You can see the lines moving. All right, let's see what we call it here. It's like a little crucian. 
So our ground bait's working, but we haven't found the rough. waiting long enough it's hard to be patient though it's just really slow right now um Might be a rough. It's a nicer one. All right, so we want to put it right back out there, kind of over the reeds. See if we can get another one. Just like that. Fish on feeder. Looks like a rough to me. All right, this is working good right now. Okay. We're on a bit of a rough run, which I like to see. <laughs> uh, no handouts on this one, but. Technically, worms are free, I guess, at the cottage pond, so. Looks like we're already getting another nibble on our feeder. Oh my goodness, I can't use this bamboo rod much longer. It will drive me crazy. It's actually, I think, worse now that we have it at the deeper depth, the higher depth or, depth or whatever, because there's less room to you know, actually cast it and have room to be able to pick it up off the ground. It's not just that we're missing the fish on like ones like that, it's that we're actually not waiting long enough. It, you know, the, the fish is definitely like playing with it, but I just got, you just have to wait longer with float fishing now um, these days. So that's why it's like such a slow start because even the bites take forever sometimes. And then with no skills and cheap hooks, it's hard to know like, okay, when am I not waiting long enough? Or when is it just a, uh, a cheap hook, not, you know, 
staying in the fish's mouth. That's a big bleak. Uh, wow, okay. So if we go even shallower, are we going to see a lot of bleak right here? Using those blood worms? Nice crucian. Let's go check out our cafe orders. Might be able to turn something else in now. So for our rough, we actually could turn it in. How much time's left? Five minutes. Yeah, I mean, I think we just want to go ahead and claim it. Let's don't take a chance. I mean, that's 32 silver. Let's go ahead and do it. Uh, any other, we're very close on Crucian and we should be catching more Crucian during the day. Bleak aren't worth a lot. So if we get a second bleak, it's probably worth doing that order. Okay. Interesting. So we're up to 38 silver. We probably should just go ahead and replace our bamboo rod. I hate to keep spending silver this quickly, but I really just don't know how much longer I can use this bamboo rod. So. The only, you know, the thing to think about is make sure, normally I would never get a float rod before buying the next feeder rod. However, with this event going on, we're probably going to want to do a good bit of float fishing to see if we can't get any of these uh, presents in. So keeping that bamboo rod close to the surface on the depth, first of all, seems to be helping with, I can pick it up without pulling the line out of the water. It also seems to be helping the bite rate. I think we're just going to be able to catch tiny little fish right here near the surface pretty quickly, which is fine by me on that while we're using that bamboo rod. We should uh, probably move our feeder back. It's getting to be morning again, so let's move our feeder back to where we had it before. So I'm going to hold down B and select bread, change the bait back. Man. Drive me cuckoo. And from right here, we're gonna go back to 20 clip, hold down control plus or minus to set the clip. Give it a cast. See what we can catch. Sleeper.
Mm. All right. 38 silver. So we, do we do it? I guess we do it. I think we'll get another one that exact same length, so they'll be uniform. And um, see if we can afford some four four-ish kilo line. Let's look at the line first to see what we're going to be able to get. Three point five. It's twelve silver, but it might be worth it. Or three point nine. We don't want to go four point eight. That's right at the. Now remember, there is line at the fair. It's pretty expensive though. Get right at four kilo. It's pretty nice. I mean, it's three and a half stars for a little bit more silver. I don't think it's going to make that big of an impact though. All right, let's do it. Let's get another one of these for 25 silver and a little bit nicer line. Do we want to go 3.5 or 3.9? Let's go 3.9. Let's get the cheapo stuff. So we're back down to nine silver. One last fish on the bamboo. Okay, so we wanna disassemble this. And we wanna put the new one in our number two spot and the one that's in the water in our number three spot. Uh, so let's just move this guy over here. And let's get this guy out. Put the 3.9 line, and I guess we'll use this for now. 14 size hook, and um, we'll go with worms. What depth? One meter depth. What do we have here? Ooh, a sleeper. I like it. So we'll put this one like clearly to the right side. And then this one we'll put at one meter. To the left side. Kind of want to push this one a little bit farther out. All right, we're in business. Haven't heard the feeder going off though. Righty. Uh, this is going to be a present. Oh my goodness. We're going to have to And we don't have a net yet, so we're just have to. All right, let's open it quickly. Oh, instant coffee. That is awesome. So when we level up our cooking a little bit, we'll be able to make 10 portions of coffee with this. That is awesome. I mean, that is just straight silver. It's something we would have needed to buy anyway uh, as a new player. Again, one of the really cool parts of this uh, event to get stuff like that for free. It is really, really cool. Oh, 
feeder might be going off soon. Our float rod is also trying to get a bite, I think. There's level five. Oh, I couldn't see it. I thought it was underwater. All right, let's go see what we called on our feeder. Wait, did the fish come off? Oh, that's what I get for not having any, having not put my points in yet. That's not where we want to cast it, but that's fine. All right, so let's look at skill points. Let's catch this fish. Can't believe how much float fishing we're doing, but I think it's worth it with these gifts. And plus it's just a fun event, you know? Um, okay, skill points. So normally I would tell you that the first thing I would level up is fishing with a feeder rod. It gives you not only casting distance and accuracy, but also control of the fish. And I am going to do that. I'm going to put two points into this. This is going to help us hopefully not lose fish as often. But I also really recommend putting points in the mixing ground bait. We're going to put two of our points here. We'll put one more point there when we can, and then we'll just chill on it for a bit. But putting points in that means every time you make ground bait and then later in the game PVA, you're not going to be wasting ingredients or silver because you'll make a really high quality ground bait every time with points in there. So I like putting points in there early on that because I know I'm going to make a ton of ground bait. So I might as well go ahead and get the ground baits quality up. Maybe it'll help my fishing go a little better. Um, so that's why I go ahead and do that. Nice roach. I don't think anything has changed on the cafe, but let's make sure we're not going to get that order. Um, so we lost the crucian order. Too bad. A pike order came up instead. Really too bad. White bream aren't as available as they used to be. You sometimes see them still, but not as much. Uh, okay, let's just look at the floats. I, I, if you're doing float fishing, having a float that really like helps you catch the bites better is actually really helpful. I don't, I'm not saying spend a ton of silver on floats, but um, I'm trying to see which ones I've used that I like. The, these, these, even these, the the two, the slims. Like I have better luck with those. I can just recognize bites a little better. So I might get one of those. But the other thing is we also have floats a part of the fair. And I tend to like um, the feather floats. These are really good if you're into match rod fishing. But those feather floats I really like. Maybe we use one feather and one uh, of those slim ones that I was just showing you. I don't like these basic ones as much for some reason. I think it's just mind games, but if you're going to put yourself through float fishing, especially for Crucian Gibbles, you need any little advantage, <laughs> mental advantage you can find. And for me, that's one of them is having a aesthetically pleasing and also just a float that like the way it goes under and stuff when there's a bite makes more sense to me. 
I think ultimately it's just getting used to whatever float you're using. Maybe it would even be better to get two, two of the same so that we get used to seeing both of them and recognize when something is a real or fake bite. By the way, I think that was a fake. Sometimes when it's running like that, you're like, okay, that's a real fish. I mean, that's a real bite, but if it's going slowly, it's not always. Um, do we wanna do two feathers? These are like upgraded, upgraded feathers. I think we will. I think we will. I like the slim ones as well. You may want to try the slim ones, but since the fair is going on, let's bring a little good luck with the uh, actual fair specific floats. Okay, it's a crucian. These are so much better than those free flat feathers that I just actually can't stand, but these are not too bad. Bite rate over on our feeder is a little low, isn't it? I know we're going long here, and it, it's possible I'll have to stop any second, by the way, if, if, if my work situation uh, changes. I may have to do something else. Oh, you know what this is, right? Let's go ahead and get ready for it. Oh, that's awesome. I can't believe we're already getting a second one. As a level five player, this is amazing. I, it, you know, it's just random. I don't, I don't know which, what this will be, but I hope it's something useful for a low-level player. All right, let's open it up. Ooh, Rage series, guys. The amount of of silver. I mean, we're not going to be using jig hooks right now, in all likelihood. But the amount of silver it would take to buy these, uh, we should go look at that just for funsies. All right. We can't even use these till what? Level 12? All right, let's see what these are. All right, Rage Series number 54321, Jig Hooks. Let's go see how much those cost, if they even have them in stock here. I'm telling you, like, that's worth so much silver. I mean, it may not seem like much because it's not something you can use, but... Um, Wait, which one was it? Rage series, right? Yeah, and it even shows which ones I have. 1836. So it's like basically, it's basically 100 silver. It's actually not as much as I thought it would be. I thought they were going to be like 40 to 50 silver each, but still, it's a lot. 100 silver, right? And one little, one little quote unquote fish that I just caught. It's pretty amazing. can't just sit there and do that because that's when I get impatient and I'll pull it too quickly. It looks like we do have a fish on here though. Now we'll be able to cast this a little bit farther now and hopefully have a little better control of the fish now that we have those two points in fishing with a feeder rod. So that's the biggest fish we've caught. All right, I'm just going to put it over here. We're going to move to a new spot. If, unless work interrupts me and we have to stop, I'm actually going to be moving to a new spot soon. You know what we need to do, though? We need to go get the map so we can actually look at, like, the spots we're casting to here. Where is this fish going? Come back here, perch. All right, let's go to the admin building, grab a um, map. Uh, I might have to sell a fish first. Oops, that's grocery store. We do need some of this, though. Make some more bread. All right, uh, I guess I need to start using more bread. Well, no, we've got it on our feeder. It's fine. Where's the admin building here? It's around here somewhere, isn't it? It's not up there, is it? Oh, it might be that building there. That's a long way for me to travel. Let's look at the cafe real quick. I mean, we need to go over there. I think it's. it might just be three silver, but it might be five. All right, so we need four more perch. We're not going to have any orders. Oh, a new rough order so tempting so tempting let's check on our floats real quick and we might as well put this in um, 
we'll put it in back over here because we're going to be gone for a minute while we go to the admin building. See, we're casting farther now. It was much easier to hit the clip. Ugh. Okay, we'll probably miss a bite or two there, but at least we've got one feeder. And that's the nice thing about feeders. You can go do something like this, and the fish will still be on when you get back with float. There's no telling what will be happening. Oh, did I sell any fish? Yeah, oh well, we're almost here, so... There is player housing now. It's right through this gate into this red house, if you want to check that out. Yes, it costs three silver. Good. Okay. So now when we hit M, we actually pull up a map of Mosquito. So we can kind of get an idea where some of the holes are and stuff. Got another rough order. We need a size eight hook. Is that a fish? Yeah. We need a size eight hook. So what do we have that's worth anything in our net right now? Let's sort it by price. Oh, this bleak. Nice. I forget how much bleak are worth. Okay. Um, the bleak and the sleeper gives us six silver. Okay. And let's go see what, what level are we? Five? What's the highest level hook we can use now? That's level six. We can use this. How much does a size eight cost? 5.9, it's worth it. All right. So we're gonna go try to catch a bream or two here shortly, if time allows for us to do it. Let's go scope it out. So we're going down to 7377. I fished this spot before, it can be really good, although normally you would use peep orange, which we, we can't make yet. Speaking of which, we need to do this. Oh yeah, I remember where this is now. This is like around the corner. So we're not exactly gonna be able to do this and float fish for presents at the same time. So um, we'll just have to move everything when we wanna go fish for bream for a few minutes. And we won't, we won't go the whole night because it's getting, this video has been over an hour now. There we go. That looked like a sleeper or something. I mean, it's like just took it and went. Perch. Yeah, that's the other thing. It'll just take it and go. Uh, I probably shouldn't have even thrown it back in the water because I think we're about to, well, it's only 1536. I don't know that we should move yet. Is that line moving at all? Yeah, it is. Okay. It is. The roach. Okay, so now looking at the map four meter hole is like right out there. Let's try this. Let's just get it in the hole and see if anything's in there during the day. Might not be on bread, but it's worth a try. Let's just see what happens while we're uh, letting a little more time go by so we can go test out the bream on worms. 
Another perch. Is there still a a perch order that we were even possibly going to hit? I mean, it's unlikely, isn't it? Something's taking that over into the weeds. A little roach. We are getting a bite on the feeder. That's interesting. Even with feeders, you want to make sure that the fish is, is actually on there moving the line, not just um, nibbling at it. Sometimes just the nibble will set your bells off. A white bream. Okay. I mean, were we expecting that on bread? No, we were not. But we'll take it. We're not going to get the white bream order. It's five. Not to chance. I think the perch have to be over a certain size though. That one's not big enough, I don't think. The bites are just like I mean, almost immediate we're getting nibbles right now. It's the time of day, though. This is an active time of day for fishing. Which is why we probably should go try it. Let's go try the bream spot. I mean, we'll just be able to try the bream spot with our feeder. We'll just have to do normal float stuff with our floats. But, all right, let's see if... Nope, nothing. Ooh, hold on. Okay, we got it off. It's like stuck on something. All right. So, 73, 77, 18, 20 clips, something like that. Uh, it's a really good bream spot, but they are the most active on pea porridge, which of course we don't have access to yet. We'll see, where are we? Yeah, we're going a little bit farther here. I recognize it. We're almost there. Right here. 
All right, and where we want to be aiming is like basically just right out there. Let's do a 19 clip. So this is where we're going to use that size eight hook I got. Size eight hook with worm. We could totally get, I mean, this is a really weak feeder to try to catch a bream on, but I'm, I'm, I'm sort of counting on the fact that with less than ideal bait, less than ideal ground bait, chances are we're going to get, you know, we're not going to get huge bream. And with this, I'm just going to go straight in front of us. Actually, I want to go a little farther than that if possible. I'm going to put the small hooks on both with blood worm and then worm. Just see if anything's biting right up here along the shore on float while we wait to see if we can get a bream bite. Still a little early for bream, but if they're there and they're biting worm at all, we'll start getting some some nibbles most likely. So frustrating. Probably just need to back up farther so that I'm not tempted. I always, I mean, I think I often just pick it up a little too quick on float. I'm used to doing float fishing with fish that don't nibble quite so long. These are some serious nibblers. Bloodworm's not doing much yet, is it? I do think that fish is on our feeder, but I think this this might be a pretty quick bite here. Oh shoot, didn't mean to do that. That's what I get for having my rods out of order. So by number, rod one is farthest to the right. So my brain said that that was rod three. All right, is that a little bream? What have we caught here? Yeah. So that's kind of what we're going for. Like I said, it's still a little early. Hopefully they'll get a little bigger than that. If we had pea porridge, they would get a lot bigger than that or other bream baits. But worm at mosquito, I bet will still work pretty decent. Quick bite. There we go. Might even be a marker bream. Oh, it's a roach. Okay, we'll do it one more time. Really, bream time doesn't really start till, you know, 10 p.m., midnight, something like that. So we're way early, but I wanted to at least show this spot. I'm 
sure we'll come back here and fish some more, but I know we'll also just be doing a lot of float fishing here in the beginning for those gifts. So figured we might as well show a real, a real deal feeder spot here. Some nice sized roach though. Doesn't seem like the best place to float fish. It's been pretty slow on float. In fact, we haven't caught a single fish on bloodworm. We've had a couple nibbles on worms though. So one thing to remember, especially early on, this will become less important very quickly, but early on, remember every 24 in-game hours, which is one hour in real life, you can get free tackle at the cottage pond. The most important part of that tackle are the worms you get. So get the um, float tackle, not the spin tackle. The spin tackle gives you a, a really damaged reel and a pretty weak rod now we could do that once just so that we have a second rod if we want to mess around with trolling a little bit but for now we're going to get spare float tackle again and then we want to travel back to mosquito make sure we don't have any cafe orders and then sell our fish and see where we are after this first episode I think our best bet, I mean, it'd be nice to target bream a little bit. We're just not really there yet in terms of the our gear. So our best bet may be just continuing to do a combination of float fishing with one or two tele rods, according to how, much, how many feeders we have, and then just trying to figure out this spot a little better over here, because that should be a pretty good location to catch um, some decent crucian gibbles. And you really just kind of want to do 20 clip aiming at the house right over there that's what i was trying to do but we're just using bread right now once we get some little bit better baits that we can use it'll it should get a little better all right let's double check cafe we're so close to level six but i think i'll just wait on so you know 13 silver for those perch would be nice maybe i'll save the perch because they're not worth anything anyway they're not markers uh in case we do a second episode tonight so all together we only have 17 silver Let's sort by price here and we'll sell the stuff that's actually worth anything, which is those. And then everything else, I think we keep just in case we get a weird cafe order come up for next episode. I mean, it's only worth 0.89 silver anyway. So if any of this turns into a cafe order worth four or five silver, obviously it's a huge benefit. So at the end of one episode, we only have 18 silver. 
um, but we're starting to get there on the um, you know setting up of, of our equipment uh, I think during the next episode we're gonna focus as much as we can on leveling bait harvesting by making more bread we might start leveling cooking but I doubt that'll be next getting a second feeder rod set up we need to do that ASAP and um, the other thing we want to save for and get ASAP is uh, there's actually two things one is gonna be a landing net that's gonna make our life a lot easier it's a lot though for us at this level 27 silver but we do need to do it and then the other thing is gonna be a shovel so we can start digging for worms but there's really no point in getting the shovel until we also start with cooking so we'll kind of time that together I think it's in the hardware store did it already is the hardware store back there it is, isn't it? The hardware store is one of these over here, isn't it? I'm still getting used to new mosquito. That's tackle, so that must be hardware. So here's the shovel here. It's 38 silver. Again, expensive for this level, but we want to do it when we, we want to do that and cooking, which means we need the tea kettle, which is 20 silver. So I think getting a second feeder probably comes first because we just need to be able to start consistently catching better fish, hitting cafe orders, and then the silver starts coming in a little better. Okay, happy Christmas. Can't believe it's almost 2021 now. Um, but thanks for joining me, thanks for watching. Episode one, a very long-winded episode of uh, the leveling series at New Mosquito. All right, look forward to seeing you next time. Peace out.